Hi, I'm Jason. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Historically Marked. This is the Cemeteries with Markers edition. I am in Bloomington, Illinois, and it's got some historical cemeteries and sites all around, but this is arguably the most historic cemetery Bloomington has. It's, in, it's tucked away in many different neighborhoods and railroads, and this goes all the way back to the early 1800s, or so a sign says. There are so many notables buried here, including a lot of veterans, but I will show you a few of the most notable grave sites and memorials here on this um, cemetery. So I will go ahead and do that. Come with me. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Adley or Adlai. <laughs> I'm going to start off with a senior. Lived from 1835 to 1914. And under Grover, under President Grover Cleveland, under his second term, which was from which was from 1893 to 1897, he was the vice president. This guy ran for president twice, unsuccessfully on the Democratic ticket, running against Dwight D. Eisenhower. But he was named the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations by President John F. Kennedy, or JFK, serving in London, England, until his death in 1965. I'm going to go ahead and show you those graves. And this here is the Daughters of the American Revolution plaque. This here is the former presidential candidate who lived for a great 64 or 65 years. This is his final resting place. To the left of me. And it's not so often I prioritize on the vice presidents, but I do did want to make sure he was part of this video. So here is his final resting place. At least Stevenson. Now we're approaching a little monument. This was carved out of a dead tree. This by this guy right here is Charles Old Hoss Radborn, baseball Hall of Famer, played for Boston. I'll have more history on him, but I thought I'd check out this grave. Very nice, kept up well. It's got Old Hoss literally carved in there. <laughs> and I will show you his actual grave site. There is a historical marker next to his grave. So it's kind of a good view in between, you know, the monument and the actual grave site. But it says here he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1940. That was, I think, three or four years after the actual Cooperstown establishment was founded. But he played in the late 19th century, up until his death. Unfortunately, he is not really remembered well as, say, Bob Gibson. Well, Bob Gibson's still alive, but Christy Mathewson, who was known to be one of the best pitchers of all time, or Babe Ruth, one of the greatest players of all time. I guess it's safe to say he is an unsung hero in the baseball world. This one's for all you entertainment and classic Hollywood fans, Wizard of Oz in particular. I know there's several international Wizard of Oz fans and that are, inter that are interested in the history, but this is the final resting place of the girl that inspired Dorothy, as we all know, played by Judy Garland in the classic 1939 movie. Now Dorothy's actual grave is right over there, and there's her monument, but first we're going to read the marker. Of course, back then, you know, frequent photography didn't exist back then, so there are no known pictures of her as an infant. She was the niece of Frank Baum, 
as most of us know, wrote The Wizard of Oz. The tree monument over there wasn't even there until three years ago. Good golly, 2017. That it was carved by a local guy named Bill Baker. He carved Dorothy, Toto, the Yellow Brick Road. Actually, it was in 2018 when it was stumped, when it was carved. Okay, so it was two years ago. So now we're going to go to that monument right now. Here is that monument that was carved from that tree. I would you look at little Toto? Somebody even did him in detail. And Dorothy is actually buried not too far. It's a little bit of a walk. And please, I am not trying to be disrespectful by walking on all these graves on top of, you know, the actual bodies. But this is Dorothy's final resting place. Very tragic. I mean, I know it's always sad when somebody dies, but somebody who only gets a shot at life for only five months. Just unreal. But I'm glad that she was immortalized by her uncle, Frank Baum. I'm going to see what's behind the stone there. It looks like something. Oh, here it is. I guess this was her original gravestone. I'm glad they left it there. Here is one of the most interesting in this cemetery. It is a plane crash memorial. You can see it in the background over there. But this is a historical marker detailing all about it. I'll give you a little read up. On May 31st, 1948, a group of citizens gathered at Evergreen Memorial Cemetery Civil War Veterans Enclosure to honor those who had given to our great nation through their military service. During the ceremony, a World War II trainer plane flown by James A. Tooley and passenger Chester H. Fromm was flying over Evergreen Memorial Cemetery and Park Hill Cemetery to drop poppies over the grounds. By the way, Park Hill Cemetery is, I believe, on the west part of town. On the second pass over Evergreen Memorial Cemetery, the plane crashed into this tree, killing Fromm and severely injuring Tooley. It took years for the cemetery personnel to determine that this was a tree that they crashed into. In 2015, the tree had to come down, and cemetery employees felt something more needed to be done with the wood from the tree. So they got a chainsaw artist named Tim Gill to do that, and that was dedicated on 2015. So we're gonna go, go ahead and visit that spot. And fittingly, fittingly, it was carved into an airplane. Here I am underneath it. Gotta get out of that sunlight. It's weird that it just rained here. So I believe this is a, I mean, this is a very nice and touching memorial. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Historically Marked. This is the Cemeteries with Markers edition. I am in Evergreen Cemetery in Bloomington, Illinois. I am Jason, signing off.